Hi everyone and welcome to another one. Welcome to program code 101, the place where we learn the art and skills required to develop code. I'm your instructor, Mr. Decoder. In our last video, we completed the stage of pseudocode development and we also looked at an idea which illustrated how all the stages were used together. To see the details of that video, you can click the link above. In today's video, we will be looking at the concept of program constructs with emphasis on sequential constructs. What are program constructs? Program constructs are the building blocks of writing computer programs. They form the basis of all programs by outlining the sequence or order of actions being performed within the program. Types of program constructs. There are three ways or methods that can be applied when developing or constructing a pseudocode or program. These include sequence or sequential construct, selection construct, and repetitive or iteration constructs. Sequence construct is used to outline the process or actions that should be performed in a specific order. Statements or instructions are normally executed from start to finish without any deviation. Example of sequence construct. The sequential construct is what we have been using since we have started our pseudocode development journey. It looks at performing each of the outline tasks in the same order as how they are stated. This is similar to actions we would perform when changing a tire or performing a dance routine. Here we have our example that was worked, which accepts two integer values, then performs the task of finding and displaying their sum. Let's look at what is required to write a pseudocode from a problem statement using sequential construct. First, the problem statement. This problem asks that we write a structured pseudocode that accepts the name and two test scores of a student. The algorithm should calculate the average score of the student, then display the name and average score using a suitable label. In order to generate a solution to this problem, a four-step process is recommended. Step one involves dividing the problem into three key areas. These key areas include input, process, and output. In using our problem statement, we saw where a number of items were being requested for entry the name of the student, as well as the two test scores that were to be entered. We also saw where the problem statement mentioned that we need to calculate the average score, as well as display this average score along with the name of the student. So these three areas, input, process, output, that is what we need to identify first within our problem statement. The second thing that we need to identify is the total number of variables needed for the solution. Now to identify this, it is recommended that we look at the entry that needs to be made within the code, as well as the processes that need to take place. At times, you may need to look at the display that is being requested to identify the total number of variables. The third step that we need to follow is that we give the variables that we identified names as well as appropriate data types. And this is going to be based on what is expected to be stored in the variable. And from our discussions, we know that this part is referred to as the declaration phase. And the fourth step that is recommended is that we follow the other stages of pseudocode development. These include the initialization phase, your prompt input process, as well as your output stages. Now, let us construct our pseudocode using the sequential construct method from the program instruction. Here, you are seeing where we have our problem statement listed above, as well as the three key areas in which we have broken down our program. Now, in following the steps for constructing our pseudocode, we know that the first step is to start the pseudocode. The second step within our pseudocode development process is to declare the variable. Based on the steps that we outlined earlier, notice that we need four key variables. These variables are the student name, two test scores, score one, score two, as well as a variable that is being used to store the average score. These variables have varying data types. Student name, because it's a non-numeric entry, we use a data type string for that particular variable. The scores, score one and score two, the data type integer is applied, and the average score 
the data type real is applied. After the declaration phase, we now have our initialization phase, which is used to set starting values or variables that were declared earlier. Student name, because it's a non-numeric data type, we use a double quotation mark, open and close, for that initialization. Score 1 and score 2, because of their integer data type, is a starting value 0. And your average score, because of the real data type, use the starting value 0.0. .0. After our initialization phase, we need to prompt for our entry. Using the three key errors that we separated our problem statement in earlier, we always prompt for what is in the input section. So we're going to be prompting for the name of the student as well as the two test scores for the student. Here I'm going to be using three separate prompt statements to accept these entries. First, the student name is being requested this is done through the prompt statement enter name of student once that is displayed to the screen the user will be expected to enter a name for the student second prompt statement is requesting that the first test score be entered so we'll have the keyword print followed by the instruction enter student's first test score again each statement follows your prompt statement and the first test score will be stored in the variable score one or third Prompt statement is asking for the second test score. This reads, enter student's second test score followed by the variable score 2 will be used to accept the entry made by the user. Now, once this entry has been made, next step for us to go through is our process statement. And the process that needs to be carried out is to calculate the average. Here, the average score is being calculated. Score 1 and 2 are placed in a bracket followed by a division sign and the number 2. Now this is going to add the two test scores first and once that is found then the result of that addition is going to be divided by 2. After our process statement we now have our output statement and based on the instruction given within the question it is asking us to show name of the student followed by the average score using a suitable label. This suitable label is in line with our descriptive text because it gives user an idea of what is being displayed from the program. So for our first print statement, we have the descriptive text, the name of the student is, followed by the variable student name. The second print statement has the descriptive text, student's average is, followed by the variable is used to store the average score. After our output statement, we have our keyword stop, and that shows the end of this solution. Yep, good to go. In our next video, we'll be looking at the concept of selection constructs and how we generate pseudocodes using selection constructs. Let me know in the comment section if you benefited from the question work today and if you would like to see me work the questions like this. Thank you for being a part of another one. Remember to like, share, comment and subscribe just do it until next time take care